Hi, in this video, we'll be learning about sorting arrays. The definition of the word sort, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, is to put in a certain place or rank according to kind, class, or nature. This is something we can do with arrays. In general, if we can compare two or more elements or objects by any of their attributes, it means that they can be sorted by that attribute. For example, if two elements have a numerical attribute, we can sort them from least to greatest or from greatest to least. And if two elements have a string value, we can sort them alphabetically or even from shortest string to longest string or vice versa. Let's now take a look at some of the different applications for why we might want to sort arrays. The first application are contact lists. Each individual contact can be its own element in an array and then we can sort that array alphabetically. That way, all of your contacts that start with the letter A, for example, can be at the top or at the front of your list. Another application is shopping filters. The items or products that you shop for online can potentially have a lot of different attributes. They can be price, size, color, rating, and most popular. You can store all of your products in an array and then sort the array depending on what the user filters for. Another example is video game graphics. Video game graphics sometimes are sorted by their size so that players aren't stuck in long loading screens. Another example is email applications. If you're building an email client, you can store all of the user's emails in an array and then sort it by time and date. That way, you can ensure that your users are getting the most up-to-date information whenever they check their inbox. Lastly is sorting applications in our phones. Smartphones will usually have an app drawer or library or folder where you can find all of the apps that are installed on the phone. These apps can be sorted by alphabetical order or even by category. So these are just a few examples of applications where sorting is important. You can pause the video here and see if you can come up with any other applications. Let's move on. So we learned about why it's important to sort our arrays, but how do we actually do it? And the answer is that there are many different ways to do it, and some ways work better than other ways in specific situations. We call these types of programs sorting algorithms. Some of the more popular ones are bubble sort, selection sort, merge sort, quick sort, and heap sort. The one we'll be looking at in this lesson is the bubble sort algorithm. Bubble sort is not the most efficient or fastest algorithm, so it's not really used, but it is an easy to understand algorithm that is useful when introducing the topic of sorting. Essentially what this algorithm does is it steps through a list or an array comparing adjacent items, and if the items are in the wrong order, we swap them. It sounds pretty simple, and that's because it is. Let's look at an example walkthrough of this algorithm in action. So here we have an array 5, 4, 2, 1, 3. And we're going to apply the bubble sort algorithm to sort it from least to greatest. It's important to note that with the bubble sort algorithm, you may need to pass over the array multiple times until it is fully sorted. So let's get started. In the first pass, the first comparison made is between 5 and 4. And since 5 is greater than 4, we swap those two elements. The second comparison made is between 5 and 2. And since 5 is greater than 2, we swap those two elements. Next, we compare 5 and 1. And since 5 is greater than 1, we swap those two elements. And then lastly, we compare 5 and 3. And since 5 is greater than 3, we swap those two elements. And so on the first pass, we end with the array 4, 2, 1, 3, 5. And so far, what we have successfully done is identified the largest number in the array and moved it all the way to the end. Now we move on to the second pass. The first comparison made in the second pass is between four and two. Since four is greater than two, we swap. We then compare four and one, and we swap those two. And then we compare four and three, and then we swap again. In this pass, we move the four to its correct position. Before we move any further, see if you can pause the video here and predict how many more passes we'll need to do in order for our array to be fully sorted. Let's continue. We're now on the third pass of the array and we compare two and one. Since two is greater than one, we swap and then we compare two and three next. And since two is less than three, we do not swap those two elements. And we end the third pass with the array sorted one, two, three, four, five. So this is essentially what the algorithm is doing. Let's now take a look at the code that makes it all happen. 
So here's one way that we can implement the bubble sort algorithm. Let's step through it line by line. We want the algorithm to be inside of a function. So on this first line, we name our function bubble sort, and then we make it so that it can take in an array as a parameter. Our bubble sort algorithm makes use of a nested for loop. In the outer for loop, we create a variable i so that it can iterate through the entire array. For our inner for loop, we're creating a variable j so that it can iterate through the length of the array minus i because the largest element will move to the end of the array after each pass, so there is no need to compare the last i elements in each subsequent pass. If you remember from our walkthrough earlier, once we got 5 all the way to the end, we never compared any of the other elements to it again. Let's move on. This line creates an if statement and checks if the current element at index j is greater than the next element at index j plus 1. If it is, then a swap is needed to put the larger element to the right. On this line, we make a call to an external function called swap. This function works by taking in an array and two integers as parameters. All it does is swap the value that is at the j index of the array with the value that is at the j plus 1 index of the array. And that's it. That's one way that we can implement the bubble sort algorithm. In the next activities, you'll get the opportunity to implement a version of it yourself.